It's 7 uh, 10 September 1st. We'll call this meeting to order. Um, the first on the agenda here is we should have put the minutes. We have the minutes here. We have to uh, approve last uh, April 11th minutes. Did everybody get a chance that was here to review? Second. second. Okay. There's a motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye over there. Myron. Okay. Very good. Uh, minutes accepted. All right. Um, we have here, we were supposed to have a presentation from um, Morton Builders today. And I called him yesterday morning and Evidently, he didn't get all the information we stopped in. And when were we down there, Donald? Tuesday? Yeah. And uh, we asked him for details of uh, fire stations and substations um, wherever around the whole area here. Not here, but uh, around the United States, wherever they... they build these buildings they're all over and he did show us a couple books he gave it but it's to me that's not satisfactory it's not fire stations it's um, CVS's drug stores churches and you know we're not building that we're building a fire station I told him we need to focus on that and we asked him to give us 25 packets to distribute to the Finance Committee, the Capital Planning Committee, the Select Board, and all the other committees concerned and our members of all kinds of different uh, configurations of a fire station. Um, last uh, meeting we had uh, was a, a decision to look into the cost, so we need, that's Hope, I was hoping we, we would have that done tonight, but again, uh, they're not ready to uh, to uh, set forth with, with their, their uh, exhibit. So that's, we just have to wait to get them ready. And next on the agenda, I'll create a letter of support for the selectman. I don't know if that letter that was given to him in the presentation is uh, acceptable or you guys want to put something else together with, with more facts in that letter. So if you guys could maybe take a look at it, you don't, you don't have that here, what you do? If you take a look at that, you can maybe make some comments on that. Copies uh, for people. No, we this the letter. Yeah, does anybody else need one? I don't think I have. I have. You don't have it with you, no, it, Myron. Do you have yours with you? Yeah, well, it's in there. It's like in that was the letter that was given to him in the presentation. Uh, do you have that with you? I don't have that. Yep. Okay. I do need to see it. What is this? No, that's give it back. I was that's got your letter in it. No. If somebody here. You got it. it. Myron got it. Myron got he one. Says I gave it to you so you can look at it unless you got it. This thing he's talking about. It's the second page down or so. So when you wait for the board. The one we sent to the board? Yeah, the one he did his presentation, he read it to the select board. Those two pages, this is the next one. Mm -hmm. When he started his presentation. Yeah. 
Is there is there any comment on that at all? I want to get all this stuff for free. Mr. Chairman, I think the only thing I would suggest is, you know, uh, we've got the price there, uh, 3.6 roughly, and as we get closer to town meeting, uh, when we decide on what we're going to build, what type of building, we're going to have to change that figure, I think. Um, you know, unless we go with that type of building, I don't know, but there's going to be more discussion forthcoming, I'm sure. Um, would ask the staff to reckon on that. Right now, we're talking about this. <coughs> because that's based on building an architectural building. If the committee uh, changes their mind and build a, uh, you know, Morton building, it'll be significant difference, and it'd be very misleading to go with that figure to people well, as we get closer to town meeting. Again, you know, you can say significant difference, but we didn't take that and have a presentation from them. We don't know what kind of difference it would be. So I, I think maybe we should add that into whether it's another letter of support to go to them, to the Finance Committee, to the Capital Planning Committee, make that letter so it, it touches all bases, whether the uh, police will write something in there to incorporate in that, the fire chief. That makes sense, but I think the letter has to be much more factual. Right. You know, with concrete figures of what we're going to actually propose to town meeting. Mm -hmm. Not a hypothetical figure of, you know, a building that we may decide not to build. Well, it's... I think as far as informational purposes, the letter is good, John. It's just to tell people what, why, why the committee decided to design it this way. But I think it's... Point as far as if the committee changes its mind, price will change. Mm -hmm. But as we progress with this process, we need to bring everybody updated to where we're actually at. And we we did we did vote last night. I mean, last meeting to look into the the cost of a pre-engineered building and comparable what you what do you get I mean our architectural building is uh, a quality building versus not so quality building you know what's the warranties on them you know this course there's difference of materials what they use but you know uh, I think we start we need to start putting something together to just say we're gonna build a building well the questions are what are you gonna build this building of, uh, with, or what's any kind of details. Today, Mr. Nixon uh, uh, gave me permission to talk, talk to that, uh, that OPM, and uh, I did call, and what he said to me today, that they never received the contract with the town of Hadley. So he says, I can't talk to you. <laughs> so that ended that thing. So. Uh, I called back uh, David and he says you'll probably get it tomorrow so I said well you find out and then let me know but um, they were uh, notified that they're going to be working with this project so I want to find procedures what do they expect from us and what do we expect from them David told me that if you call them in here it's a $900 charge yep. Yep. So, but I want to find out right from them just what is it. If we talk to them, we send them information or what, but somewhere, don't you think we got to meet up with them? What do you think there, Frank? Um, you're going to ask the OPM to do what exactly, John? Well, whether it's uh, going to, who's going to design this building or, you know, well, I would think you would basically you want to determine what you're looking for in a structure. Do you want a pre-engineered building, which mm -hmm. is a little cheaper, or do you want to go with, with a, a different structure? 
Mm -hmm. And then you uh, put out an RFP to solicit a, a firm to design it. Yeah. If you're doing a design build type of a project, that's one route. Last if you're going to hire an architect, yeah. they, you know, they're going to respond to an RFP. They're going to tell you what it's going to cost the town. Mm -hmm. They're going to probably have a rough budget, just like what we talked about. Yeah. And then you select the appropriate party, at which point you move forward. Willie, did you have any dealings with this uh, OPM? No. Like, like you said, uh, he hasn't received the contract, so uh, uh, they won't talk to us until they get a contract. And we, we know who it is. And, uh, yeah, right. I got the firm, but, but actually, it. what did they offer? That's what I want to find out. Well, that they're going to be generally, in general terms, that OPM acts as the town's agent, and they're an overseer. They aren't going to design it. They're not going to, you know, <clears throat> chase somebody for you, but they're basically going to oversee to make sure that financially it stays on track. Then my question is, where in the process before a town meeting, does this happen after the town meeting appropriates the money that the design come in? Is that how that procedure goes? I, or? I would think you have to secure the budget and then you advance towards, are you going to do a pre-engineered building? Are you going to do an architectural building? But you have to start with the budget. Right. At least then you can start talking about preliminaries and, and value engineering. But otherwise, without a budget, you you know, you know not a lot of folks that are going to do it for free. Right, exactly. Right. That's how, do you, how do you secure a budget when you're not sure what type of building you're going to build? Well, that, that's why we picked the number we picked. Okay. Not you know, to interrupt, we, but we last month meeting, we spent probably an hour and a half discussing uh, architectural versus pre-engineered building. And after the discussion, there was a vote taken in the meeting, and it says to build a pre-engineered building. It, so not, why are we veering no, from that now? That was not to build it. It was, it was to look into cost because we have no idea what the cost is. I would ask the two people that made the motion. I think that was their intent to build a pre-engineered building when I listened. Was it? Well, it has right. I don't think so. Right. I thought it was to look into the cloud. I don't know the cost of being engineered. What, we, is it, what does the minute say? We get a rough estimate now. Listening to the discussion, after all of that, what come out was $3.6 is too much money for a building, and we're going to have a tough time selling it. And they come up, they made the motion saying a pre-engineered building would reduce the cost significantly and it would still have everything the two departments need inside. But it, it did never explain about the quality of the building. Well, motion was made. Motion that was made by Myron to build the pre-engineered building and I seconded it. Okay. So that's, okay. so that's what that is, you know. And I, I realize that uh, can I read a quote? This is out of a pre-engineered building, okay? And this really impressed me about a post-frame construction, okay? After hurricanes Katina and Rita ravaged the southern U.S. coastal states, postal frame buildings stood tall amidst the rubble. The same is true following tornadoes in the Midwest and snowstorms in the north. That's no surprise that those who engineer and build post frame structures <coughs> when built correctly, their unique design and construction performs exceptionally well under tremendous weather conditions. So, I, you they know, got, I'm, I'm just saying, I know what, what an architectural building is and its quality because you're building mortar block, but I don't think that is our intent to build a building like this. This is a substation. We want it to last 40, 50 years, yes, but it is not the main station. It is a substation. 
See, I, I kind of disagree whether it's a substation or main main station. That building needs longevity and needs to be, be built once and right once, not... Well, I agree with you, and I agree with Mr. Aquadro, build it out to its fullest extent the first time and not phase it in, which I agree with... Frank, 100% on that. Mm -hmm. Would you like to make any comments on it, Frank? Um, we started out with something that we thought, a concept. We're starting with concepts. And the concept was to put something in the center of North Hadley that would blend into the architecture that's there mm -hmm. <clears throat> and would satisfy the abutters in that historical group. That was a goal. That was the goal. Um, if you're looking to lighten the load of the building, then, in my opinion, this is going to go against what you're saying or against what the committee's doing, would be possibly to then look at a different site and also rethink what the building's going to do. Could it be large enough to house the DPW? Like I said, that's contrary to what we've said for the last two months, and I'm not trying to s turn the card around, but I'm not, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to lessen the appearance of the building by having a pre-engineered building, then I think you may have a hard time selling it for being in the center of town. You know, that concept of a fire station right there, that could be either way. It could be pre-engineered, and that's only a brick facade, the front and the rear. It has a standing seam roof on it. You know, the back could be all metal side, and you're not going to see it. But you're going to see the north elevation and the south elevation, and that's the west elevation near the front of it, that building. You know, that could be either way that building could be built. And again, if, you know, hopefully next meeting we'll have a presentation with Morton's going to come in. You know, he took a picture of that type of building. I mean, Anybody, any one of us could come up with a, you know, a concept of, a, of what that building should look like. That's just, you know, it's not even a proposal, it's just a concept that, uh, a starting place maybe. So, uh, I guess what we got to do is just wait till Morton comes in and just make their presentation what we're going to get. So then we can figure out what that's going to cost. I really think it's going to be, it will be cheaper, but also I just uh, I want to make sure it's a, it's a good, strong building. Both buildings got to be built to code. There's no way around that. Okay, yeah, but at what cost? That's, that's all we, we talked about because of the cost. Yeah. And right? The part that impressed me was they can build the uh, framing stronger and that whole east side right here actually could carry uh, solar panels and would pay for all the electricity in the building and actually make money to sell back to the grid. Donald, that's just the way the trusses are rated. Yeah, I know. That's Any what building. they would build it to ha have that extra load. Right. Right. It has to be like five pounds per square foot additional or something. I don't know. Right. But it could be done on another building, the same thing on a architectural building, too, to put solar panels on eventually. Mm. And they wouldn't be seen in the historical district because they're on the back side of the building. Did we get what is out for debt where this would fit in without any new taxes? Did you, did you nail that down? Well, they've been saying uh, 319000 each of the next three years. 
That's the figure they're using. That money would be available? For debt, I believe. And I, I was told that when the debt comes, we can build two buildings. That is not going to work. No, that isn't. That's not going to work. Oh, okay. Frank, do you? This is, um, this is from Linda Sanderson's schedule dated June 15th of 2016. Um, right now, we have a current debt load of about $950,000. And in year, fiscal year 2019, it will drop, uh, looks like uh, 285. And then again in the year 2020, it'll drop 410 <clears throat> off the debt, debt load. So there's no way. So you know, if you take, let's say you ta you have four hundred and ten thousand dollars on a twenty-year note, on a twenty-year year note, uh, if you borrowed five million dollars, that you would have a payment each year of four hundred thousand dollars. So that's that's about what what the impact would be, or or I shouldn't use the word impact. <clears throat> what you would have to, to play with or use without changing the tax rate. I, I talked to 20, yeah, FY20. I talked to Zadonic on, on the assessors. He figured that thing would be below 300,000 payment for this at this 3.6 million. Uh, well, I'm just, I'm just using the schedule that Linda had shared with me. You know, three million would be two hundred forty thousand dollars. Right. So four million, four million, three twenty, and five million would be four hundred thousand. And the senior centers, what is that? Five point five million. I believe so. Or I three point five. Yet, to be it's honest like, with they you, what's in that handout? I think it's three point five. That yellow. Pink slip day. I thought I gave you. I gave you that to make copies. What'd you do with it? I haven't seen it. I gave it to you. Three point five is in your. That's from. Yeah, right there on your capital or expenditure. Okay, what the heck did I throw that? Yeah, that's right there. It's the senior center. So what you're saying, well, it's two, two of those you were told too. Well, if you did, if they did their project for 3.6, and we did the fire station, and this, the fire station passed at 3.5, just adding the numbers together, you'd have $7 million and your yearly principal and interest would be $560,000. Right which is over over and you're not calculating in the library uh the dpw said they would wait five years they want to get their infrastructure that's calculated in here the school is ready to implode in 219 they're going to be short money you have to calculate everything into this big picture if you build three well, buildings I'm, I'm all at once your tax rate's going to go up five dollars if they voted for it question for you guys. What was the last percentage of government we went out to bond? When this what? We went out to bond last time. Yeah. Last time the town went out to bond on any project. What was the rate that the well, bond well, issuer gave us? Well, we went out to uh, 20 years ago. I couldn't I couldn't tell you. Uh, we'll have to Do you know our bond work. our bond rating is double A? It is right now. Yeah. Okay. She said she figures three percent, right? Uh, I think it's uh, and the interest. Yeah, it's, it's the interest that she's carrying is 3%. Right. Yeah, because the prime rate's going to be going up pretty quick, I think. Right. Well, that on that. And this is June, you know, it changes all the time. Oh, yeah. I don't know when or where we're going to get an exact answer on this. It's just like 
you talk to three different people, there's three different numbers here. Four. Who are we for? What for? What the amount we're asking for, and what this is going to cost in payments per year, and what actually is going to be available with whatever else is they're putting in there. Right. Well, I, I think we can go with uh, the figures Frank got because they that came from Linda, and Linda should know. So we figured that's what it's going to that's what it's going to cost us. Range. Yeah, I would. I would would say these numbers are pretty pretty, pretty close. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you definitely wouldn't ask me to give you figures. Well, the selectmen already voted for a priority, and you're building priority for 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 this uh, this uh, substation as priority one, correct? That's correct. And That's the correct. selectmen did. Yep. So I, I would hope the Finance Committee and the Capital Planning Committee would join them and support this. You know, it's not saying that, that you go to town meeting, the town meeting's going to vote for this and vote for it. They can vote for what, whatever they want. Mm. You yeah. know, no, nobody, nobody can answer that until the town meeting's over with. So. I think the critical vote is September 19th, the ZBA. If it musters and passes, then we'll know it's a viable site. If they vote no, basically this whole project's dead there, and you have to look at another site if you're going to continue on. Yeah, it's I as mean, simple as that, I think. If, if they vote this down from that site, and really the only thing that we're looking for is a five-foot offset from the line. We have the right site dimensions. That's all what we're looking. So if they they do not vote for the Greenbaum proposal, then we don't have to divide that that site. That whole site is all town property. This is the town project. Yep. And so that's all we would ask for at that time is the five foot difference, the setback from the front. Because we have the side dimensions, you have the back dimensions. Mm -hmm. I think another thing, yesterday morning I talked with the town administrator, and this is very important. Uh, the present fire station, building it out to uh, get the new truck in the north station. We had 92000 left from Russell's school account. That money could be used for the build out of the fire station so we can get the truck in irregardless of what happens. But if uh, the building is sold to Mr. Greenbaum, then that whole project's off too. So this right. 19th is a big vote for a lot of things happening in this community. Right. Absolutely. And you know, the, the possibility of the park and rec staying in that building, that's a possibility. They're already moving. They're moving to Hooker School. Definitely. Are they moving all their equipment too? Well, most of it can still stay there temporarily till this vote is taken, yeah. you know, because you don't have to have soccer balls, basketballs heated and stuff like that. But uh, eventually they're going to have to find a better place to keep all that stuff, too. You know, before we go, why don't we address that, that letter that came to the email to the selectman? Excuse Would, me, John. Could I just say something on... Um, I submitted a uh, capital project for the North Hadley station to David. Um, basically, it was for just a bare minimum expansion, just to be able to allow our engine three to back in there safely. And that was $5,000. That was to raise the door a bit. That's to move the oil tank, just to do some upgrades in that space to allow us to get that engine in there safely without you know, tearing the antennas and everything off. So, you know, that's in there as well as a as a backup. It's not, it wouldn't be the 92,000 that we were, you know, the US right. state, it was, I know that's what's left in that account, but um, there is an option for that, and that's what I had requested the building committee, and I'm pretty sure you guys were on board with that if all this kind of gets stalled out. You don't know nothing about it. We had talked about it, and you guys agreed to support that if, yeah. if for some reason all of this stuff didn't, you know, if the vote didn't happen and we had to stay there for a longer period of time, there's some bare minimum stuff that has to be done, or we're, we're going to be parking stuff yeah, outside. Yeah, we, we know that, but there was some figures and everything. We didn't, I don't, 
That's well, I mean, that's been in capital for a lot of years, but the bare minimum we put together this year that was just submitted when it was due before I went away. So I can get you that number. Yeah, if you would. Be nice. So, did the, what is the selectman going to propose that to town meeting, or is that? Well, the capital planning committee, I believe, meets on that. This is mm -hmm. this is different. There's this an article in the warrant for that specifically. Okay. Just put it in a day ago. At this time, Donald, why don't you read that memo that was set to, sent to us, like one from John Allen, and I, I, I would like the the fire chief to respond to that so the record's clear. Okay, this was said to the Board of Selectmen, our Town Administrator, David Nixon, uh, the Chairman of the Finance Committee, and I believe Mr. Aquadro got one also. Uh, I'm going to read this one paragraph. Who and then that I'm from, Donald? From John Allen, former Selectman. In the 12-year period from, the dates are very important here, 1990 to 2002, the Globe using numbers provided by the state by the towns produced an interactive graphic for their story. For Hadley, the graphic shows two fire stations and 16 fires with most fires centered around the main station. Even if the fires were evenly distributed, that is an only an average of eight fires per station in 12 years. That is less than one fire per station and hardly justifies staffing, equipping two stations the incidence of fires has declined since 202, what with smoke detectors, new fire and building codes, and inspection. And then he, in the end he goes on to ask, I do not yet know yet what justification is for the multi-million dollar North Alley Station as far as need is concerned. I'd be interested if anyone can explain the need using verifiable facts. So I think the Fire Chief would like to comment on this and... Okay. All right. Could you respond to that? I can, but I just want everybody to remember that I just got back two days ago, yeah. so I put together what I can because I received this email and it's been a bit very big whirlwind, but I have some, some basic information and I'm sure Myron can add stuff if he'd like as well, but... Um, my biggest concern on this this letter uh, from Mr. Allen, and I am I am scheduled to meet with him and some other folks next week. And uh, 1990 to 2002, we did not have any full-time fire department staffing. Uh, Ed DeKevitz, you can attest to this as well. Um, basically, at that point in time, we were reporting only uh, fires with loss. We didn't report every single fire to the state fire marshal's office. So that's why you're seeing. <coughs> that number of calls. So those are strictly just structure fires. So for our SAFER grant uh, that I applied for, which is a staffing grant through the federal government, I have some bare minimum facts. And every year in our annual report, um, we put down exactly what we went to um, and what the call volume is. Johnny made a copy of it, you have it. <coughs> so in 2015, 15, I'm sorry, uh, the Hadley Fire Department responded to 1,009 calls for service. Uh, the department responded to 425 medical calls, 30 fires, which included four structure fires, three chimney fires, one electrical fire, two oven stove cooking yeah. fires, one furnace malfunction, one dryer fire, one residential exterior fire spreading to the siding, four mulch fires, eight vegetation brush fires, a hay bale and fire, and four mortar vehicle fires. The department responded and conducted five search and rescue operations involving injured and lost hikers and bikers at Skinner State Park, as well as one river rescue and river search for a missing person in the river. The department requ was requested for mutual aid from South Hadley District 1 three times for structure fires, uh, District number 2 uh, four times, Northampton fire four times, uh, these are these are fires that we requested them to come to us. Um, Northampton Fire Department four times and Amherst Fire Department twice. Sunderland also was requested three times. Uh, Hadley firefighters were requested requested for mutual aid to assist other communities to Hatfield, Amherst, and East Hampton once. Northampton twice and Sunderland three times. Hadley firefighters were also called up and deployed as part of our District Ten. Forestry Task Force 
to go out to Athol for a very large wildfire that they had. Um, so that's that's some of the basic information. That's that's the main stuff. So I also pulled out the Safer Grant documentation uh, for the past three years. So it's 2013 through 2015. I don't have the totals for you, but I can get them. But I can give you some of the biggest statistics on it. So. The way that the, when we report to the state, it's pretty specific on what the fires are. Um, so fires that actually impact structures, uh, so there's different series that you have to, you have to fill this into. Um, so again, in 2013, we had seven structure fires, 2014, 12 structure fires, and 2015, 18. And I can get the documentation of how it's broken down. Uh, hazardous conditions, which, which can include power lines down, a whole plethora of things. We had 17 in 2013. In 2014, we had 24. In 2015, we had 23. Uh, service calls, which can be uh, lift assist, somebody falling, requiring assistance. Um, again, there's a whole list of different uh, items under that. In 2013, we had 9. In 2014, we had 68. In 2015, we had 61. False alarms, we have a lot. And uh, if it goes, I mean, the problem is if somebody has a false alarm, we still have to go to it because we don't know it's false until we get there and figure it out. Uh, if we have businesses that are uh, dealing with faulty equipment and we get called multiple times, they get, they get fined, um, they get ticketed under the non-criminal citation process. But in 2013, we had 185 calls. In 200, uh, 2014, we had 186. In 2015, we had 176. Um, vehicle fires, we had five in 2013. 2014, we had seven. In 2015, we had two. <coughs> um, Motor vehicle accident is another big response for us. We had 162 motor vehicle accidents that we responded to in 2013, 198 in 2014, and 205 in 2015. Uh, as far as extrication, so people being trapped is part of that, is a lower number, uh, two in 13, two in 14, and six, or three in 15, sorry. Uh, we've had rescues, we've had, we also respond to medical calls as first responders. So in 2013 we had 209 and in 2014 we had 298. So that's, that's some basic statistics and I can, every, every month we put together an actual spreadsheet of all the runs we go to that's submitted to the select board for their review. Uh, I can make copies of that. Um, we also are very active, you know, the, there's another thing that everybody can look at here is that the goal is not to have fires and our fire prevention is, is very strong. Nick and I are constantly doing inspections and you can look into the annual report again and take a look and see how many inspections we, we completed in 2015 with just two people. Uh, the MRI report that was put together for the town of Hadley uh, that the town paid for in 2012. Uh, they did a ben benchmarking, so a comparative analysis to some com communities uh, of similar size and population. So they interviewed the town of Granby, the town of Limmel Littleton, and the town of Temple Templeton. And there's some significant findings, and you can review this. You can, I believe they have it on online. The town administrator has it if you want to request it from the fire department, uh, I'd be happy to share it. And uh, it goes through some of the differences, uh, you know, the benchmarking between those departments. Um, so in this case, just a couple of examples. Hadley is the only department of the one sur survey that does not provide its own emergency medical services. Um, Hadley is 73% below the average in terms of the number of career firefighters. And probably as a reflection of its commercial base, Hadley has 28% more EMS calls than the average department, so the other ones that they surveyed. The number of actual fires and fire calls in Hadley is below average, but the dollar loss is more than double the average. This may reflect be a reflection of response time and the fact that Hadley's experienced a large dollar loss in 2010 
And again, we also experienced a large dollar loss my first year in 2013 with the, 2000, uh, the 206 Russell Street fire, uh, multi-million dollar loss um, where we had 65 plus firefighters fight, fighting that fire from all over the state. Our overall budget is 40% below average uh, surveyed and the fire EMS budget is 66% below the average. So all this information is, is, uh, is available for folks to review. Uh, we have, I have put together a five year phased approach for trying to get full time staffing because we are going to substantial number of calls. It's not, we're just not sitting around the station and doing paperwork. So this, this, this letter doesn't clearly reflect to everybody all the stuff that we do do. Every day, and the Chief Mason can to attest to this, uh, I went out to, I'd say, three or four calls just today. Uh, two motor vehicle accidents, multiple uh, calls for medical service, and false alarms. So, again, uh, while I appreciate this, we're, we're talking about a pretty substantial time difference here. We're talking 1990 to 2002. Mm -hmm. The business district has probably doubled, if not, has not, if not greater than that. The number of residential properties have gone up. And I can tell you that, yes, while fire prevention has helped with adding smoke detectors, I can also tell you that with the new building construction, uh, what used to give us, we used to have an average 30 minute response time to be able to handle a single room and contents fire because of the construction and because of what every, everything that was in the, the building with the natural fiber products and wool and, and wood and everything else. Everything now is plastic. Everybody brings home plastic from their furniture to their clothing. And so you can cut that amount of time to between three and five minutes for a room to flash over. So you're looking at a, we're, we're, behind, we're behind the eight ball right off the bat. So I've, I've done uh, extensive research on the response time for our call force firefighters uh, if we were to lose this North Hadley station and that's been presented to the select board. Uh, you're talking about a substantial delay. Uh, and we have to assume, uh, we, we can't assume that, that everybody is gonna be available in the center of town. We have to assume that there's gonna be people in the north end of town that might be able to respond to a station to get a vehicle. And that, I believe, was the original concept behind putting that north station where it is right now. So not only uh, building up the morale of the people that live in that area with equipment there and their turnout gear there and being able to respond there and get into a working fire truck to get it to the scene quicker it also it also it truly happens and that data I have as well so we have data that shows the time difference for uh, multiple firefighters showing up at that north station to grab that truck to get up to the Shattuck Road area versus how long it takes for our center station trucks to get there. And that's with calling mutual aid at the same time. So basically, as a call force department, if we get called for a structure fire that's confirmed, we are automatically calling mutual aid. And the time it takes for our call, call force gentlemen to get, ladies and gentlemen, to get to the station, to get their gear on, normally we're meeting those departments there or they're coming there shortly after. So they're not getting there before us, regardless. So imagine now if you put a full-time department together and kept that North Hadley station, what that time frame would be to get folks out the door into that fire. We'd have a much better fighting chance at being able to control it, contain it, and hopefully lessen the damage and potentially save lives. So that's, that's my answer to this letter. Um, so, okay. Having said that, a lot of people I have knocked on doors for two months now, and they said, how do the chiefs, the police chief and the fire chief, do they support this fully, this North Hadley station? I completely support the North Hadley station. I, you know, I've, again, I've spoken to you at length about this, and I understand right. that there's, you know, there's budgets to deal with, and... Uh, Mike and I were asked to be on this as in an advisory role. Mm. So the committee came to us with a, a proposal 
and they asked us to put together a plan for that size structure. So that's exactly what we did. And um, again, we, as far as I know, and it's been the task of the building committee, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we're looking at putting together structures that aren't going to have to be uh, added on to or rebuilt in the next 50 years. We're looking for a structure that's going to be able to expand with what's going on in the community. Um, you know, do we need a police substation up there? You know, I, I, that's, Mike can explain that. Um, it's, it's something that we put together because that's what we were given by the committee. So we put together a plan that we felt was the best use of that space, and it provides for us that in the event that we have some sort of a disaster, which happens in this area now and it's not getting any better, uh, we have the ability to run our operations out of that North Hadley station fully, both police and fire, if we, if we needed to. Right. Primary, this is for fire. But if something happened to the station, the police could walk in there and operate out of there as well. That's correct. So, you know, it's not going to be a public safety complex. It's going to be a, a, a substation to the fire department. But there's still room for police to work on right, right on side of you. Backup, right. Right. And, you know, the important part is the backup communication there, too. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people don't really understand this, and they don't understand, you know, what's the responsibility of the fire department and the jurisdiction of the fire department. You know, and that's, you know, people have told me, well, let Amherst respond. Well, the taxpayers in Amherst are not going to pay their taxes to cover Hadley or Sunderland. You know, there's a mutual aid. I think it's pretty clear. It's on. It's in the newspaper continuously. It's on their their union website. The Amherst Fire Department is under a lot of strain mm -hmm. because of the number of calls that they're covering. Right. So, you know, I I should have brought it today, but there's a picture in this month's fire catalog showing Hadley's fire our ladder truck at a mutual aid call in Amherst. We were the second truck on scene supporting them because all their ambulances were out the door and it takes them time to recall their 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 force, their call force, their student force and everybody else they have. So we're we're supporting them just as much as they support us. But that's it's again, we've we've said this before, the the concept behind mutual aid is for when you have nothing left in your community. So when you've you've exhausted, you have everybody there, um, or you know what you have, and you know what you're up against, you're bringing in those resources to assist you. And it's it's the same across the board. But does it, it does it put a strain on us when you know we we were at uh, the first week that we did our groups, we had two mutual aid calls in the same day, one to Amherst and one to Northampton. Mm -hmm. So we had a truck in Amherst for three hours and a truck in Northampton for five hours. So that's our, our firefighters out of town where we're then going, okay, who's who's still left here? Who are we gonna call if we have an incident? Chief, Chief Mason, wait a minute. Chief Mason, would you like to make any comments on this so far? Uh, I would completely agree with Mike as far as um, you know, the structure itself. We were given you know, the task of putting together the, the floor plan for the building of that size based upon the recommendations of the committee um, so that we didn't have to do this again. Uh, do it right the first time kind of thing. Um, so that's that's why it was put together the way that it was. And I, I would agree with Mike and as far as you know his facts of uh, you know, response times and things like that. So what I'm getting out of both of you, this is not only built, this proposal is not built for today, but it's definitely outreach for the future. I can't imagine how you could look at it any differently, but well, as, as you know, we've talked about before and, and Mr. Quadro brought up earlier, is, and Donald as well, my concern is the price tag and that we'll end up with nothing. Mm -hmm. So, and I, you know, it's it's very similar to what I what I said last night to the board about you know the public safety budgets, just the standard operating budgets about what we're both looking for, 
as far as personnel and things like that. We understand that there's only so much to go around. And we'll have to figure out what to do if it gets voted down. The problem is, is that Mike has, um, you know, this fire truck and, and the other issues that he needs solutions for. So if we end up with nothing, I, you know, I, I know I understand the capital money is in there to, to build out the building that's there now, but then you're also, you also have to deal with what's going to happen with the ZBA and Mr. Greenbaum's proposal as to whether or not he wants to purchase the entire property now, and um, that's my concern. But yeah, um, redundancy for communications and things like that, and backup and, and building it for the future, absolutely. That's the common sense way to approach things. See, my comment to both of you is I watch the police department, I watch the fire department. I'm retired from the fire department for over 20 years. And everything is escalated from that. More calls, more strain, and it's just not on YouTube departments. It's on the highway, it's on the sewer, it's on everything. Everything does not stay the same. And we got multi-million dollar homes up in North Hadley that are being built and they're on the docket for being built. We got reconstruction in, on, on our industrial place here. They're gonna be knocking down homes and building bigger buildings. And, and that's just a fact. This is what happened. And I served on that building committee, the original building committee. And a lot of things were wrong and it started off with the wrong architect and I firmly believe that if I serve on any committee for this town that these mistakes will not happen again. They cannot. We have to stand, look for our future, and build something that will last and it will work. Now Duke, you had a question? Yeah, about this letter about you only have a few fires in North Hadley. I live in North Hadley. Is, is, is this person who wrote the letter saying that as being a, a citizen of North Hadley, I don't deserve the fire protection that the people in the center of town have? And I've been on the fire department 43 years. Now, Donald, you and I have been in some real quicker fires in North Hadley. Two of them right on the town line that I remember. Donald's shop right next to his, his house, the old mill. And don't, don't tell me that fires don't happen. Can you write me a guarantee that this will not happen in that section of town? Who has the crystal ball to tell me the future? I want to see that ball because I get a lot of use for it. But do these citizens in North Hanley deserve the coverage? And your approach to this building to build for the future is good. You go in the House of Sticks, our, our new fire station, and the thing sways. You guys remember the, the story of the three little pigs and which house remained standing? The brick house. I'm not talking about the young men's club. But you got to build it so it lasts. If you have any kind of major disaster in town, what's, what do you want standing? The fire stations, the police stations. And yes, we do need to be done in communications. And we do need a place, if God forbid something happened, where you could put these people. You guys used your head, and you did a good job on this. I like this station. But to tell me that, oh, we don't need it because we don't have any that many fires. Right. So, I, I don't have a crystal ball to tell you where the next fire is going to be. Is there going to be any loss of life? Is it going to do loss of property? You know, you've got to be ready for this stuff. And that's like why they built that station in North Hadley to cut down your response times. So this this Johnny, this letter, I, I don't know, belongs in a shredder, in my opinion. There's uh, another plus to the station that's being designed for civil, could be used for civil defense. Yes. It's going to be all set up so that there it's an emergency, say, at Golden Court, where they lose their electricity and heat. They could all be moved down to the North Hadley station, and it's so designed that all I'd have to do is pull the trucks out, set up all kinds of cots, and it'll have heat, and hot water, and toilets, and showers, and uh, kitchen facilities in an emergency. And we do not have anything in Hadley right now. 
that I know of that will do the job. Well, now that you mention that, you know, myself and Donald traveled all around Western Mass. We were in the Birches in Worcester County. And we asked all these kind of questions. A lot of them, they'll have designated two different places because if there's a hurricane or tornado goes through, true, wipes, say, the stations out, lightning, and that happened in Belchertown. The police was taken out the communication. One year, the fire department was a backup system, covered it. And then was it two years later, Donald, the fire department communications were taken out? And the, the police took we, care of it. We don't have to go there. Hadley had that happen a couple of years ago yeah. when the, the generator went out and the, the power went out. The generator wouldn't su suffice. And we had to call uh, East Hampton with our 911 only because there was a problem with, uh, with mm -hmm. the weather and, of course, the generator at the same time. So, you know, that, uh, that shows happened. us that. A month ago, a couple of months, a month ago, yeah. same thing. Yeah. We had no, there was no, we had no idea why. I mean, it wasn't, you know, there wasn't a storm or anything like that. It was just a, a motherboard went down on it inside well, the Well, you know, the big thing, the folks in the town and the taxpayers are not aware of all these things that happen. Things today don't seem to get into the newspaper or what and just, you know, people don't know. And it's, you know, they, they make their minds up on stuff that they don't know the whole story about. And that's our job is to try to educate the people, be honest and truthful with them to what's actually happening in their town. And we're not doing this because we have nothing else to do. We're all doing this because it's a, a, it's a needed uh, departments and it's a needed service in a primary service for every resident, woman, man, and child for their protection. Yeah. And uh, I can talk personally, I had three events with my heart and I had the police there, I had the fire there and the ambulance. And it was a life-threatening thing. I ended up in hospital all three times and I was very happy that the police were there. I was happy to fire, I didn't tell them what the hell you get out of here. I could have just passed out and it could have been the end for me. But yeah. no, 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 they no, were there. Our loss, right? What did you say, Willie? <laughs> 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 that was our <laughs> loss. <laughs> Damn it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, I think we're friends to the end. This is about the end. <laughs> you know, Mr. Chairman, maybe our travels, probably the most important thing, we went to at least 15 stations, talked to chiefs at uh, both departments. And it was the same thing every place we went. Went to town meeting, they cut our building. We got half the building we wanted. We're oversaturated now. Belcher Town, a prime example. They're 20 years old. They have 150 sheets of plywood and sheetrock on the second floor that they haven't been able to get more money to finish the upper building for 20 years. Well, wasn't it true? Every station we visited, everything was to capacity. There was nothing really built for a future. And I, uh, again, I don't want to build a little cubby hole just for today. I think it's a waste of money and it's a waste of time. I think you know, the, one the other, the you one got, place we went, the chief meant this as a joke in Franklin it. County. You gotta leave, you, Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, in Franklin Thanks. County, Thanks. and Thanks. after he told it, I didn't find it very funny when I started thinking about it. He said they had a structural fire. Eight firefighters went to the scene. They're all volunteer fire department. The only trouble, no one brought the fire truck. So that happens. And I couldn't believe it when he told them. They lost the structure. We, you know, we used but to it have, does happen. We used to do that here in a fire department until the chief changed it. You've got to go to the station, your bunker gear is there, and then that makes sure because we went out there before. I can remember that. Who brought the truck? We're there, but no truck. So I brought the truck, Joe. You brought the truck. I brought the truck a lot of times. And I think you brought the truck. Yeah.
Yeah, but there was a few times that. Yeah, who's up first? Right, exactly. Okay. Do you want to make any more comments or? Well, I just, I also I wanted to say that, that uh, the, our department's been working really hard and we've been looking at new ways of attempting to save space. And I, you know, Myron, I've worked with, I've worked with Ed a lot on it in the past, but you know, we even took, I, the group that we had worked hundreds of hours on the truck that's coming into town that the, the town was kind enough to buy for us. So we are bringing in a new rescue pumper. So we've put two different vehicles into one to attempt to try and save space so we can move another vehicle out of the way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're making every effort to be able to do that too. And there's new equipment, there's, there's so much equipment now for all the different things that we respond to. The fire department pretty much covers everything and um, I can tell you it's a lot mm -hmm. but there's a lot there's a lot of calls for service today I can just tell you that we ran down the stairs at our own station because uh, you know somebody coming into the station tripped and we were down there putting band-aids on the person so you know we're it's constant continuous and I, I would just like to say thank you again to the folks in North Hadley the firefighters and the folks that step up and help because they had a very large motorcycle uh, ride that uh, they were doing a fundraiser and one of the gentlemen had a heart attack while he was riding his motorcycle up in the in North Hadley on the S turn uh, right past Edge Cook's house police officer and those gentlemen up there who covered that station were all on scene doing CPR with the police and Mitch Cook and got him back so you know there's another perfect example of how important that that station is and those folks that respond from that area good. Yes. Okay, good. Johnny, you mean, uh, i mean we know we know and we thank you very much mike for g giving us uh saying all this on tv you know so the people know and we understand because we're all ex-firemen and uh you know they've, they've worked on this so but what we want, and, and we want the people to be uh, to notice what is done and what has to be done, and what we want to we want to do here is to give them what they need. So, but uh, we don't want to take up your time all night long. So, you know, uh, we appreciate your uh, stopping in to talk to us on this and giving us all this information. But I think we ought to move this along, Johnny, so we can get all our stuff uh, down the uh, site expenses and uh, the outside funding. Okay, so next down on the agenda, the explanation of, of uh, the building size and the function. I think we talked yeah. pretty much plenty on that. Yeah, we talked right. enough on that. We got prints on that. And now, and all that. So Donald we'll was looking in for outside funding. He met with the state rep, the senator, and was it Senator McGovern you talked to about it? Congressman. Congressman. Uh, Keith Barnacle, he's the uh, aide, his aide in Northampton. And he says there are some funds available, but we've got to present a package to him, like the design of the building, uh, how big, in a location. I sort of put it all together, you know, and I guess I'm asking this committee if I can go forward to continue to look for this funding. I'd spoken to uh, Senator Rosenberg on the new bill that was passed. It's mostly for infrastructure to create jobs, but he told me it looks like there could be money for sewer, water, and drainage work. So that would be a big asset alone. You mean on the site? On the site. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I would ask if you could look for that to comply with that MS four. That you know, in, that's the drainage. That is there's there's a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars right there. The part I didn't understand about this drainage when uh, Ty and Bond, you spoke to the gentleman Tom Kucher. Yeah. He said North Hadley is not in the district no. or something. That's How did he explain? I don't understand that. That is, we were talking about the demolition of the North Hadley home, and then he said that's outside of the construction site. But he asked me if I wanted to come down, and he's going to give me detailed information, and I'm going to next week meet up with him and go down there. But 
if you want permission from this committee, someone to make a motion to allow Donald to represent us and to seek federal state funding. Uh, I'll make a motion, Donald, continue uh, with your effort to try to get funding if you can. But when you say the drainage part would be a big help. Is there a second to yeah. that? Will we get a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Um, site work. Site work expenses. Um, Myron, you had a a breakdown on the one up in uh, Orange, right? That was what one hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars. Do you think that we could use? How how old is that price? That five years or so? Nine years. Nine years ago. Is there any way that you could work like on a, you know, some kind of a idea of a cost for that site? I noticed you worked on something with the, the filling in there. We got a quote from Time Bond that estimated the $125,000 for the MS4 drainage. There was a $40,000 uh, tag I got from uh, Allstate for blacktop in that site. So, yeah, I could probably work something. Okay, like that. so that's good. Um, explanation, uh, folks asked about why you're putting a standing seam roof on it, and I'm going to refer that question to Willie Dan Lake. He, he serves on the Municipal Building Committee, and the buildings that were done, and I think, Willie, you can explain that? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, the buildings were all done. Uh, the Senior Center uh, has a stand-in seam, and I went through the Historical Commission and everybody to uh, get their approvals, and after everything was all said and done, uh, people didn't even know the roof was uh, replaced. The slate was taken off and the stainless steel was put up there, and a couple of the Historical Commission people says, when are they going to do the roof? I said, that was done about three or four weeks ago. And, uh, and they approved it. They liked it. They thought it was pretty good. And we've also, uh, the town, the, um, town hall has stand and seam. And uh, it seems to be stronger and better and the chances uh, of the snow coming off is, uh, is a heck of a lot better. It doesn't sit on the roof. And the only problem is you make, have to make sure that the um, uh, snow fence where the sn snow might come over uh, in front of a door uh, or a sidewalk. But uh, the, uh, the uh, metal is very, very good. It's, uh, it's been around for a long time, and it's durable. What's the, what's the year's warranty on those, Willie? About 50 years. Yeah. yeah. I noticed a lot of those buildings that we visited with standard seam, they had snow grates on them. They have. They have. And if you look at that. the library, you see the library has a snow fence on it, and so doesn't the uh, senior center have snow fence on them. And, uh, I mean, it really enhances the, uh, the look of the building. Could you tell the folks how the stand and seam is different from a reg regular metal or uh, asphalt roof? Well, it, well, the asphalt, it's, you know, it, it won't last as long. But the <coughs> stand and seam they, uh, is rolled. When they put two pieces together on a the roof, they have a machine that goes over there and Crimp it, into it. it rolls and crimps it so that the things are rolled together and crimped together so that the, it's all bonded together. And uh, it lasts a, a lot longer and it uh, looks, at the, you can get a number of colors, but we found that the slate look uh, on the older buildings really does a nice job and looks, looks good. So uh, that would be what we would want. I mean, we can get a pretty red, but you know, I don't think red would be good on somebody's building, or pink or green, whatever. But, uh, so. Okay. Um, discussion, there, there was a, a petition put out for the demolition of North Asley Hall. And with that, there was a two-year window from this October 27 town meeting to allow the fire department to stay there 
until this this uh, building's completed. And then also, if there's a possibility of finding a developer for, for over 55 housing there, um, and if not, then uh, that there's still a standing uh, vote of selling it. So if they can't find any, it just opens up different options for the town. And uh, our building, the way it's situated, really cannot be moved over towards that building, maybe 30 more feet, but anything beyond it, the land jogs out and we don't have the depth there. So we would have to stay on that side though. But if the building was uh, knocked down, then, and we needed uh, more space for the uh, fire department or uh, or offices. If that building would be all set so that you could just add another right. motion to it big enough to take another fire truck or an ambulance or something on that. Mike, you your small, eyes are small small bigger building. here. <laughs> Smaller building. We haven't got this first one, Mike, so we can't give it a second. Right. Step. But but that's that's what's happening. So that's there. a that that would be a, a plus. Okay, Donald. Bill. Mr. Chairman, that's why I said September nineteenth is a very big night. Yeah. We have to act in good faith with that buy and sell agreement with Mr. Greenbaum on North Hadley Hall. Well, we course. certainly don't want to get ourselves in a mess where we're in tangled in a lawsuit. So September nineteenth is the big thing. If he's granted his and we're not granted ours, this project is dead and his pro will go along. If it's the opposite way, his isn't granted and ours, it'll change that again. And after that vote is taken, then many decisions will fall into place one way or another. Well, that's what was on the, on the next on the agenda, the support for the ZBA hearing. How many of you guys, thank you, Duke. How many of you guys plan to attend that uh, ZBA hearing? Where is that, the 19th? Uh, 7 o'clock here. Yeah. 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. 19th. You know, if you could pass that on to Chief Mason, too, uh, Mike. You know. So 7 o'clock, you said? Yeah. yeah his his uh, hearing is first. Mr. Greenbaum's is first. And again, I hope the select one don't come in throw the wrench in the gearbox like they did, did at the last hearing and send it back to the selectmen. But the last selectmen's meeting, right, Donald, they agreed that it belongs back over there and they took no action on Mr. Greenbaum's proposal. Correct. Until a decision if, made right, at the ZBA. If the ZBA denies them, there's no, he's going to walk from that and yeah. there's no, no agreement there. Um, do we, is there any top topics that we should talk about next meeting? Do you guys want to wait till we get, I get notification from Morton Buildings to do a, a presentation and, and cost? Is there any merit to waiting until after the 19th? I agree with you. I mean, we're, we're we can talk about it. Yeah. Well, the but thing if, is, if, without knowing, I know, but what direction it's going. But here's the key thing: is we're running against time. So if they can't have things together, that still doesn't stop us to go to other places and collect information. You know what I mean? Oh, we can get information. Yeah, that's no but problem. But I mean, we need, to, we need to start putting cost and everything else together. Well, we got, we got cost. You know, we got cost on one on, on the building Frank gave us, and all we got to do, yes, if you want to get that uh, fellow down there, get his ideas and cost on that. That's great. But I think before we go too far, you know, we got a lot of costs and a lot of information. Before we go too far, I would like to know exactly what's going to happen with the North Hadley Hall. And if we get permission to build the fireplace, there. so let's look at the time or frame. Apartment there, not a fireplace. Let's look at the time frame. Yeah, the nineteenth of September, October twenty seventh. So it gets us. If we wait and do nothing, 
That's one month to get everything prepped for town meeting, correct? Yeah, right. That's not much time. No. Right. I just, i rather have everything ready and sit back and wait for that town meeting instead of scrambling around the last minute. Oh, well, I'll get the information. We'll have the information all set. <coughs> if, if you want a day or two before the town meeting, get together and make sure we got all our... Our figures and stuff. Plus, there's two meetings prior to the town meeting. No, there's going to be a fiscal forum to explain to everybody in town where right. their tax money goes and why. But and then right. after that, there's a meeting to explain all the Warren articles, which we would be included in. So it is it, no, so it can go to town meeting no and the people be more abreast of what's actually happening and town meeting won't be a fiasco. What I got out of that last night at your meeting, there's no presentation of us, the building committee, or anybody. It's just a select one. That's what I got out. That's what you guys talked about. I'm saying the Warren articles. No, I, that's what I was talking no, about. No, it isn't. Well, that's Am what, I not? That's what I heard last night. You mean in the tri-board meeting? No. I didn't get there till later. No. I had other no, appointments. No, during so. your meeting when Molly no. was talking about what's going to happen with, with the schedule. Because they didn't want it. Joyce said, what did they want? 45 minutes or something complete, and that's it. I don't know how you're going to cover all that in 45 they minutes. They said two hours. You know? No. That was last night, two hours, the meeting. What is your thoughts, Frank, that what you would recommend we do besides run? Um, you know, the 19th, today's the first. Right. Um, I'm of the opinion that we hear what the ZBA has to say. If you want to solicit uh, your pre-engineered agent for a number, I'm sure he can give you something. Mm -hmm. You know, you give him, tell him what you want for a footprint and what you're thinking about for a dress out. He has all that. He can he can put together a budget for you. He can tell you what it will cost. You know, whether his budget includes a design. You know, then we can take that off of whatever the number is. See, Martin will present, say, that block building with the plywood behind it. If it's a standing seam, it's probably the underlayment they'll put on it. And they said, well, that's just basically like the same figure of their metal roof. Mm -hmm. And it would be... The standard seam would come with an underlayment with what is it, rubber willy they put underneath? And then the thing yeah, on top? They, they have a. Well, they put blanket insulation. Blanket, yeah. Right. Yeah, there, well, yeah, and, and my my Morton built in, uh, it was a uh, uh, truss, of course, with the blanket insulation in the, in the thing, in the attic, rubber, and then metal on the roof. The walls were metal, two by six inner wall, blanket insulation, uh, plywood, and uh, and that was the interior of the building. And it's, uh, I mean, the heating is tremendous in there. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's, there's hardly nothing wrong with it. Uh, and I haven't had a single problem with it. And it's been, you know, like it, heating in this all, all the departments, all the chiefs have said they strongly recommend the rating of the floor. Definitely, you know? definitely. And even like air condition, if you're going to use this for a center for, for a holdover for people, they said don't put one control unit with air conditioning there, put two, put one in the apparatus room and one in the office Offices. area, That's two correct. separate ones. Two zones, yeah. Question, does that generator have to stay inside or can it be outside? Oh, no, They're outside. It can you, go outside. It's got a, you got it inside, right? No, I, we have the generator room where you have all the switching gear. Oh, so that's... The generator will, will be back right back behind it? Right. Okay, all right. Um, is there any comments before we close this from anybody? So we can take care of, like, what you want to do is... We can still do research. I'm yep. still going to hit a couple more fire stations and try to document what I find there and uh, be ready for the meeting. Will be what will be the next Thursday after that 19th. I wonder. I don't know. 
I don't know. I can't. You know, the other thing that's, that's imperative, that's we probably can't. say after last meeting, uh, we were instructed to uh, contact the CPA because of the historical district and there'll be an additional cost of that building to keep it historical and edwin matusco contacted boston and he explained our plight and they said no they're not eligible for any of that cpa money so I don't and i don't know how much part of the building that would be maybe as high as a couple hundred thousand maybe i don't know yeah do you have any you know well i mean that that figure could go anywhere i guess right not, i have no idea that's not our charge and that's not under our jurisdiction that's that have to be the board of selectmen to deal with that well what did you say for the thursday it's the 22nd is that is the thursday after the 17th meeting after the 19th is yeah, the 19th is two weeks from monday so then, then that that gives us just about a month to wrap all this up for town meeting do you everybody comfortable with that well if something happens and it's imperative we meet you could schedule a meeting in that time yeah. just you know, know if you we, feel it's we, necessary if, if it comes to push and shove we get all double up to yeah all right That's um good. all right so this are there any other comments chief you want to make any other comments no. No, myron no i can make a comment I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting is history. Thank you, Miranda. Okay.